you know, I was sitting there and I was thinking, I've been going through different sermons that I've uh, done and things have just come to me. And as you were singing that song, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It says, get up out of that grave. Come on. And you know, what this, what America needs is to be revived. Amen. Ezekiel 37. The, the belly of dry bones. Come on. Think of that. Everything that is going on. You know, you, you go into these, some places that are really dry. That there's people that are speaking death into their, you know, into their own life. That part of that song where it says, get up out of your grave. See, that's what we need to do. We're the ones that are supposed to be helping us to do that. In uh, Ezekiel 37, starting with verse 1 and going through verse 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto the, upon these bones. And say unto them, All ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's what needs to happen right there. Amen. Uh, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, to you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and I'll put breath in you. And you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. You notice there, it doesn't say you're going to die. It says you're going to live. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. Another thing that we need, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. Hallelujah. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon me, slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon, upon their, their feet in an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that the Lord, I the Lord, hath spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and for this word, Lord, as this word is be, uh, being given, let it be you, Lord. Let them hear you, not me. And let those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' mighty name. 
I fire the nerve, it goes out. I don't want to be in my grave. I got work here to do. I got work on this earth to do. Yeah, because he had a plan for me. Amen. See, we're too busy putting ourselves in the grave when he's wanting us to, to stand to raise. Right. Yeah. We sit on these padded pews too long. Come on. Amen. 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 You know, I preached last Thursday and uh, old, Pen or old Pathway Pentecostal Church over there off on Royer. They're hungry for the Word. Just like here. They were hungry. There weren't many people, but they're hungry for the Word. Because, see, they, they don't want to go down into their grave. They don't want to put their self in their grave and go, Lord, when well, God's wanting them up here. Uh, I basically gave a, 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 a testimonial kind of ser uh, sermon. Um, hey, you know, I've been through. I know. I know what the drugs and the alcohol can do. We need to be revived and come back to the cross. Amen. Yeah. Right. See, I, I, we were in a team for the. A week and a half ago, probably. We're sitting there in the car. Eating. We're waiting on a phone call to go get. I think we're going over to pick up something that she wanted. When a guy comes up this way, and one guy was coming back behind the car. And I said, she looks, she looks in the mirror. Drug dealer going on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 So you see that? I don't even have to look. I know what's going on. Because see, I lived in the grave long enough. He spoke in, He spoke life into them. He spoke the breath into them. He's the one that gave us the breath. And we're doing like Jonah, we're walking away, just like my wife was saying. Yeah, I did that too. He called me to do something. I was like, no, I'm not going over there. I want to, I want, I want to go over here where, where you're telling me not to go. Yeah. Yeah. So I, had, I had one foot in the grave and one foot on solid ground. Yeah. Even though I was going to churches. Because I was still going home and, and doing the drugs and drinking. Yeah, I know what it is to be in the grave. To put my soul into the grave. To sell my soul out. Yeah. My wife that there was times where I stood at my window. Yeah, stood at one of our, our front windows. Back home in the Benzini. I'd be at someone say something. I'd stand with my sword and wait for them. I was destroying myself. I had the mindset of destruction. See, just like the lady that, that the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years. Now think of that. She said she had the mindset that she touched and the hem of his garment. Because she knew that his blood was going to make him make her whole. That his, his presence all she had to do was touch his garment. And she was made whole. See, that goes right along with Ezekiel 37. Dry bones. How they get whole. How they come out of the grave. His breath. His blood. See, my question to this country is, are we... Are, are, are we Tired of living in our grave yet? We're tired of looking at the dirt in front of us and on top of us. Yeah, other countries are are in the same boat, but I think we are we are one of the ones that what was to be blessed, but we're digging our hole deeper and deeper. Right. So six foot was it was grave. Well, we've 
we've gone down about 20 feet. <laughs> and you know, we keep going. Yeah. And I think of, uh, I think of doing my mom's funeral when I was standing there. My brother and sister were standing right out front. I had people that were the neighbors that lived across the street. You know, they, they moved away from there from like five, six years ago or something, but they came because they, they helped my parents out a lot. You know, even when I was there and when I left. Because they knew I was out doing something stupid. So they stuck in. And, you know, I look out and I. And I know that I, I did something for him. Yeah, it was hard to stand up there and do that funeral. So my mom in that in that uh, box, you know, in that coffin. I wanted I wanted to just walk over and say, "Hey, live." But see, I can't do that out of myself. The only, the only breath that can is the breath of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Right. See, we, we, we need to get back to that. We need, we need to rebuild these altars. Come yeah. on. Yeah. They're not being used. Yeah. We need to have altars at home. That's how, that's how we that's how we get out of our grave. Yeah. Altar. Yeah. Come on. We run we run to him. Instead of running to somebody else, we came out of her stress. Out of her stress yesterday, and I could see it in her eyes. Fear and worry. You know what? Don't believe the man's report. Believe his report. Don't worry about that because see. Worry will push you in your grave fast. Yeah. yeah. That's how you get heart problems. That's how you get, you know, acid reflex, all these physical problems. But see, let's not focus like Peter. Focus on the wind and everything. Let's focus on Jesus. That's how we keep out of the grave.
death. Why should I let that bother me? Right? 
Jesus said, hey, you are mine. And I'll walk through that water. And I'll walk through the fire like the three Hebrews. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. When they walked, when they went into that fire of furnace, he was there. When are we going to get back to that? The king said, hey, you're going you're gonna to worship the statue. And I said, no. But yeah, we're worshiping the government. Relying on the government to do all these things. They didn't give us life. Jesus did on that cross. Amen. That's why we on fire troops like this one. Because see, every time we walk in the doors, we know we can get revived. If we're feeling a little low in a week, that week, or, you know, we know that we have people we can, we can text or call and say, hey, I need a little help. I'm feeling down, or, you know, I, I feel like I've got my foot in the grave. Because of worry and all these things that are going on. Just like that song, rising up out of that grave, must be revived. 